Eric Connolly, welcome to 7.30. Thank you very much, Sarah. Nice to talk to you. Were you surprised when the Fox Dominion case settled? I was not surprised uh, that it settled. It looked like they were heading in that direction. And it's the kind of case and the kind of evidence that was coming out that I could not imagine uh, Fox News and Fox Corporation wanting that to be aired more in public than it had already been aired. What type of evidence do you think they were afraid of? You saw a hint of it. So in our proceedings, you were able to get from Dominion some of the evidence, some of the emails, some of the text messages that painted a pretty damning picture of what was going on at Fox News and at Fox Corporation. When you get to the trial, everything gets rehashed again and even more gets put on stage and you have your witnesses having to come in live to testify. That, I suspect, was a, an unpleasant scenario uh, for Fox News and Fox Corp. So the, uh, the settlement seemed very likely. This is the statement you made after Fox settled the Dominion case. You said, Dominion's litigation exposed some of the misconduct and damage caused by Fox's disinformation campaign. Smartmatic will expose the rest. What is the rest? I think one of the most significant pieces that people have not paid enough attention to is the global damage that was done by this disinformation campaign. In the Dominion litigation, a lot of the focus was rightfully on the effect of this disinformation in the United States. And it absolutely sowed great distrust and a lot of animosity within the United States. It, it contributed to dividing the country here. But Smartmatic, it's a global enterprise. Smartmatic handles elections all over the world. And what Smartmatic has experienced is the effect that this disinformation had on the belief and trust in democracy all over the world. So one of the big differences between these two cases and one of the things that Smartmatic will bring more to the light is this isn't a problem just in the United States. This disinformation and how it undermined the trust in democracy had a real effect, a real negative effect on democracy and voting all over the world. This is one of the most catastrophic events for a democracy and the belief in the integrity of elections that you could imagine. Did Fox broadcast the same or similar lies uh, as it did about Dominion, about Smartmatic, that it was engaged in a widespread conspiracy to steal the 2020 presidential election from Donald Trump? They were identical lies. So what Fox published was twofold. One, Smartmatic and Dominion conspired together to rig the election. That was one of the main messages that they were trying to convey. And the second main message was Dominion machines using Smartmatic's software rigged the election and switched votes. So when you look at the defamation that was front and center in the Dominion case, that is the exact same defamation that is front and center in the Smartmatic case, and the evidence that you saw in the Dominion case demonstrating that facts knew that wasn't true is the exact same evidence for us. A lot of internal Fox communications came out during the Dominion trial. What did they show you about why Fox continued to promote the idea on air that the election was rigged? It was an attempt to get their audience back. Um, as was made public in what Dominion had filed, um, you saw a trend at Fox where after they made the Arizona call, they started to get pushback against their audience for making that call, which they got right, by the way, of course. Um, but after that, there was a panic. And then after that panic about losing audience members, there was a switch in narrative where there, the company started to embrace this disinformation. And I think the Dominion filings and the evidence that Dominion put forward on that uh, was very powerful. And obviously, that evidence is equally applicable for Smartmatic's case. And for the sake of our audience, um, Fox was the first network in America to call the state of Arizona on election night for Joe Biden. And that was important because it stopped Trump's narrative that he was sweeping the election. Correct. They got that right, at least. One of the most important facts here is that Smartmatic played a very small role in the 2020 election. How significant is it that Fox ignored such a basic fact? I have a situation of 
extraordinary recklessness on the part of a news organization. My client, Smartmatic, was in LA County. They provided election services during the 2020 election in LA County and LA County only. And yet somehow, under this narrative that facts was spinning, we rigged a national election and we were switching votes in states and in jurisdictions where we weren't even participating. That is an extraordinary degree of recklessness. It takes about one minute on Google to figure out we weren't in any of those states that Fax was claiming we were switching votes in. So that is a whole other category of evidence that will come out in our case. Will Rupert and Lachlan Murdoch be a part of your case? So we have alleged claims against Fax Corporation as well as Fax News. And Rupert and Lachlan Murdoch, um, from our perspective, are front and center to the decision making that was done at Fax Corporation that allowed and encouraged this type of disinformation. So we are obviously in an early stage of our litigation against Fax Corporation, uh, but Rupert and Lachlan Murdoch are front and center for us. How much do we know about their direct involvement? There are definitely allegations that both Dominion has made and that Smartmatic has made that these two individuals were directing traffic here. And it's difficult to imagine something this sizable occurring at Fox News that was not getting the attention and the direction of the two principals for Fox Corporation. Fox calls your uh, 2.7 billion US dollar claim implausible. How do you reach such a large number when Smartmatic's role in the election was so small? The damages in this case is a very simple exercise. What was the value of my company before this disinformation campaign took place? And what's the value of that company today as a result of that? And if you can think of something that is worse to say about an election technology company than they rig elections and they are designed to rig election, if you can think of something worse to say about a company like that, I'd love to hear it. Because nothing can do more damage to a company like Smartmatic than what these defendants said. When you first filed your case against Fox, it was in the immediate aftermath of January 6th and the divisiveness caused by the big lie was obvious everywhere in the US. Um, is it any less significant now, two years later? I think it's just as important, and I, I think it's getting worse. I mean, the, the confidence in elections has probably never been lower. Um, people's concerns about the security of their vote has never been higher. It, it's a toxic environment that we have right now, and it hasn't been remedied. Uh, you still see situations where people are running away from election technology, thinking that there's a, a risk that their vote won't be counted. And if you want your vote counted, that's the best way to have your voting run. And so there's a fear factor out there. And so it has not gone away at all. And as we move forward into the 2024 election, which is around the corner, uh, I expect that it's just going to intensify. You just got the green light from a judge to proceed to trial. So what, what's next? So the, the case with Fox is pending in New York. Uh, we are in the uh, middle of discovery where we'll be taking the depositions of all the Fox anchors, all the Fox executives, and that's going to be going on for about a year. And then we move into expert discovery where our, our experts and their experts are going to put forward their reports and they will give their testimony. 24 will be a very busy year. Uh, we'll have several trials going forward for Smartmatic in 24. And then we end up with uh, the last one on our plate is the Fax trial in 25. Fox makes the same claim about your case that they made against Dominion, that if your case is successful, it will have a chilling effect on free speech in the United States. It will not have any chilling effect on free speech whatsoever. I think what the, what the courts have said is that there are certain categories of speech. There are certain things that people say that have absolutely no benefit to society. The courts call it zero societal interest in allowing the publication of certain types of speech. One category of speech that courts have said have no societal interest and are not deserving of constitutional protection is an intentional lie. We're talking about an intentional lie here. So there is no value to that from the court's perspective. And 
as we all watch news programs and we're all engaged in social discourse, I think the court is right there. Um, if we prevail, it is simply a signal that you should not publish a knowing lie. And that's probably a good thing. Eric Connolly, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Thank you, Sarah. I appreciate your time.